why are crypto prices plummeting? And did the Luna situation cause this? What even is an algorithmic stablecoin? Today, we're going to break down the recent events in the market and talk about what the key takeaways are that you should be aware of. We hope to show you three things. One, that the current bear market we are in is the result of broader market pullbacks and was not caused by the UST Luna collapse alone. Two, that the on-chain evidence we have compiled shows a potentially coordinated plan to exploit the vulnerabilities implicit with algorithmic stablecoins, but questions remain. And three, that the Terra situation briefly did impact the market, although Bitcoin proved to have remarkable resilience and the main bank run was largely limited to the stablecoin world. Let's start with what happened on-chain with Terra USD, better known by its ticker UST. Using Chainalysis new investigative product, Storyline, we can visualize the smart contract transactions that led to UST's collapse. At the time of the event, the most liquid and influential marketplace for UST on the Ethereum blockchain was the Curve Finance UST three pool marketplace. This liquidity pool allowed users to exchange UST for a variety of other popular stablecoins. As part of a planned public effort to move liquidity to a different liquidity pool, Terraform Labs withdrew 150 million UST from the UST3 pool, substantially reducing the amount of available liquidity. Nine minutes after this withdrawal from Terraform Labs, the first major swap occurred. Address A bridges 85 million UST from the Terra blockchain to Ethereum via the wormhole bridge, and then swaps it for USDC in the curve liquidity pool. This very large swap in the now less liquid pool throws off the balance of the liquidity pool. There is now substantially more UST in the pool than the other stable coins, which results in the price of UST falling. Shortly after that, a series of other addresses performed the same swap, continuing to drive the proportion of UST in the liquidity pool to over 77%. These swaps could be coordinated, although there is no evidence on chain currently connecting them. And as a result of this increased supply of UST, the peg broke. Let's take a quick sidebar and talk about the way algorithmic stablecoins work. An algorithmic stablecoin uses algorithms rather than reserves to maintain stable values over time. UST did this through a sister token called Luna, where a redemption mechanism between the two assets would set off arbitragers to keep the price stable. Holders can always mint UST by burning an equal amount of Luna However, holders can also burn one UST for $1 worth of Luna, even if one UST is worth less than $1. With the aggregate value of the swaps previously mentioned, we can see the price of UST declined. In an attempt to regain the peg, the Luna Foundation Guard and other peg defenders counteracted with swaps of over $250 million worth of USDT, otherwise known as Tether, for UST, these transactions occurred late into the evening of May 7th and the morning of May 8th. Things started to recover temporarily, but it was already too late. Investor confidence was shaken. People understood the flaws in the model and saw the liquidity doors closing. With the on-chain liquidity drying up and holders of UST losing confidence in the peg, the most feasible way to exit the system was redeeming UST for Luna. Investors ran for the exits in the next few days in spite of attempts from the Luna Foundation to rebalance the pools and deploy their reserves to defend the peg. To summarize the price events, we saw three stages of investors exiting their UST positions. In the first stage, they looked to move their UST to other on-chain liquidity pools like Curve. In the second stage, investors were looking to centralized exchanges to exit their UST positions. When centralized exchanges stopped trading UST, investors moved on to the third stage. On the evening of May 11th, the peg of UST had rebounded, but the negative Terra sentiment was too much to overcome. And in this third stage, the last exit route was the traditional burn and mint mechanism. Holders of UST burned their UST and minted Luna, causing Luna's price to plummet and supply increased by more than 8,000%. Billions of dollars in value was wiped out overnight. People claimed to have lost their life savings. How severe was the impact on the price of Bitcoin, the markets more broadly, and the activity on other assets? Before we look at that impact, first let's take a step back. 
If we look back at 2015, we can see Bitcoin's price was essentially uncorrelated with major stocks. These correlation waves show Bitcoin's price at times was extremely correlated with major stocks and gold and at times not. And this behavior is typical of essentially no significant relationship between assets. Fast forward to 2022 and we have a totally different ecosystem. Not only is the relationship between Bitcoin and stocks less volatile, but the correlations are consistently higher with certain types of stocks, including tech stocks and SPY. What's more, the relationship between Bitcoin and gold has not stabilized. Bitcoin moves with the stock market in 2022. Increasingly, the price of crypto assets such as Bitcoin are correlated with equities such as tech stocks and the S&P. I've been saying over the last couple of, of weeks and months that, well, actually many years, that crypto and the normal tech uh, shares and the total tech market will merge. And what is happening here, we, we took these data out a few, a few days ago to show uh, the movement of share prices in the tech index of, of uh, NASDAQ and compared that to the price of Bitcoin. And there's clearly a correlation here. And the way that I see this is that we basically are watching an asset class maturing. So we see that crypto is moving from being this new thing that's extremely volatile, and you can't claim that that's the same anymore. It's actually see that it moves in to become a, a, an established asset class, similar to a lot of other, other pieces of, uh, of finance. So it's a proof point that, that it's a real investment as, asset, and that there's actually resilience in the market. And I think another important thing that probably has been on, on all of your, your screens and devices, you've seen uh, Terra and Luna, and the story around that. We just saw again that it actually didn't impact crypto much more than it impacted anything else. It, it was isolated, which again means resilience, and that's one of the core features of, of crypto. This provides the framework through which we need to understand the recent stock market and Bitcoin sell-off, which preceded the USD catastrophe. Starting on May 8th and 9th, we can see that the Bitcoin price which had been declining at the same rate as other major tech stocks, started to accelerate more, which was also felt by MicroStrategy, which is a stock of a company that famously holds a disproportionate amount of Bitcoin on its balance sheet. But the deviation was not long felt, and things quickly returned to normal relationships starting around the 14th or 15th. Not all crypto markets were as resilient as Bitcoin, however. Stablecoins experienced a more broadly felt bank run on assets. Here we see the stablecoin transaction volumes which started to spike close to the UST incident. As we can see here, the incident was relatively restricted to stablecoins because we can see the share of overall transaction volume they accounted for on May 12th and 14th surged to over 60%, up from the typical 40% of transaction volume. This was a broadly felt bank run that was exacerbated by selling behavior across the board, as we can see here. There were not just a few large transfers that created the surge in stablecoin value, but rather all types of transfers across the board grew on the days in question. Million dollar transfers and $100 million transfers were completed in the days after UST. What this amounts to is that Bitcoin prices were remarkably resilient during the UST incident. Price declines were exacerbated slightly in the days following the attack, but the most impact was felt in stablecoin markets. Why is this? One reason might be that some people confused UST with USDT and started to sell off their USDT just simply out of misunderstanding. But more crucially than that, the UST incident posed a threat to consumer confidence in stablecoins maintaining their peg. Many were not familiar with the differences between algorithmic-backed stablecoins and non-algorithmic-backed stablecoins. So when, they, when the asset got depegged, people questioned the reliability of stablecoins more broadly. We saw a bank run. We even saw large quantities of Tether being redeemed by the Tether treasury. As with all new technologies, some projects will fail and some will succeed. We're witnessing the industry learn about what successful and sustainable projects look like. This happened last year with DeFi attacks, including code exploits and flash loan attacks, and now with algorithmic stablecoins. 
But the good news is that the transparency of the cryptocurrency ecosystem allows us to dissect these incidents and learn from them.